So this is an international event. It's not always here in right. Bellevue. Right, right, right. So tell me about the summit. Well, the Slow Flower Summit, we're in our sixth year. We uh, have been all around the U.S. and we um, usually have a two-day immersion. I call it TED Talk for flower lovers. A gathering of people who care about domestic flowers. A lot of them are flower farmers and floral designers and flower lovers who really want to be sustainable and green in their practices, which includes sourcing local flowers. My dream come true, trucks full of flowers. Locally nice. grown flowers are the best. This place is incredible. We've been at amazing venues all around the country, but it's really nice. And actually, it's just nice to be in our own backyard and celebrate the, the horticulture here. Everything here is an idea and a takeaway for the residential gardener and the home gardener. The botanical world is so inspiring and we get that here and we wanted to bring our 150 guests to a place that would inspire them. And we're so grateful that Bellevue Botanical Garden said yes. And then how did you get started with Slow Flower Society? Well, Slow Flowers was an idea that emerged when I was doing journalistic work. I was writing about flower farmers and floral design and garden design. When I discovered that domestic flowers are a very small percentage of what is available to us here in the U.S. 80% of the cut flowers sold in the U.S. are imported. Wow. And as a gardener, that didn't make sense to me. It's like, why are we importing a perishable product from two continents away on a jumbo jet and using all of that, all those resources, when I know that they can grow in my own backyard? Mm -hmm. Or I might know a flower farmer from the farmer's market or somebody who's you know in my community that is growing commercially who I want to support financially. Consider slow flowers like slow food. We see the slow food movement. We are aware of the whole farm to table culinary scene and that sort of celebrating the local, local farmer for the food we eat. Just take that parallel over to flowers. And so I started using the word, the term slow flowers as kind of a shorthand. Instead of fast and always available, it's this idea of something that's well loved has all this nuance to it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really like local, seasonal, and sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, for flower farming, it's also like saving and preserving heirloom varieties of flowers that maybe have fallen out of the marketplace but are worth preserving. So all of that became my obsession as a storyteller. And uh, I wrote a book called Slow Flowers that came out ten, uh, 10 years ago. And Happy anniversary. Thank you. And that just led to people asking me, well, how do I find a florist? Or how do I find a farmer uh, who I know I can get local flowers from? And so that led to all kinds of content projects. I'm just so thrilled that I get to help these talented people who are flower farmers and florists tell their story. So you're this amazing crossroads where everybody can access each other. Yes. And, and really educate each other. Yeah, it really is that intersection where the flower farmer and the floral designer come together. And for so long, those two professions have been divided by just a very large global floral culture industry that has had middlemen and all kinds of different layers. And so we're trying to break those down and say, when the florist or the flower lover can source flowers from a grower and have the face behind the flowers and know the farmer, all kinds of rich things happen. And we really, we're creating a sustainable industry that is good for the planet and good for ourselves. Your dollars are going to support a local flower farmer who you've probably met and whose family is you know in your community it really changes your perspective on how special those flowers are flowers you know kind of like i mean art and music and they're just they have no borders it's the language is understood by everyone oh, so true it's so true that. we want to try to elevate the fact that when we buy local flowers when we source local flowers when we grow local flowers we're we're creating a beautiful, rich environment for sustainable businesses, for saving local farmland, uh, for celebrating the seasons, and all of that is up against this international industry where flowers are shipped from two continents away. We try to bring together a lot of ideas, a lot of voices, a lot of backgrounds from flower farming to floral design in an intensive two-day uh, conference, you know, networking and people who do business with each other. So coming together, in person, there's lectures, there's hands-on activities, there's a floral takeover that's gonna take place at the Bellevue Botanical Garden where people are doing installations, like pop-up installations. It's really special. It's really quite the legacy that you've built. Thank you, thank you. You know, I, 
This is the best work I've ever done. I wake up in the morning so thrilled to be involved with the Slow Flowers community and, and help other people tell their stories and succeed in their floral enterprises. I'm so excited to be at the summit, be with so many people that are just as in love with flowers as you and I.